What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here. And if you've ever found it frustrating to put together a PC part picker list for the first time while building a computer, then trust me when I say that it can get a whole lot more frustrating trying to pick out all those water cooling parts if you have no idea what any of it means. So that's why today we're gonna to be taking a look at EK's new Performance 240, which is a starter liquid cooling kit inside of a box. It's got everything you need, tubing, fittings, obviously blocks, pump, radiators. And we're gonna take a look at the parts that come inside this kit because the idea here is to spend less time worrying about whether or not you got the right stuff and more time building and playing on your PC. Now the cool thing about these kits here is this is not just an upgraded AIO of sorts. These are actual off the shelf custom parts that you would pick if you were putting together a custom loop but EK has already done the legwork for you. They've already put the right size tubing in there, the amount of fittings that you need, the block, of course the radiator, the fans, the pump, and even a mounting option for the pump. That's probably one of the most frustrating parts of putting together a new loop in a, in a case is trying to figure out where you're gonna mount stuff. But not only does this have mounting option for the pump, they also are, we'll talk about the bracket here in a minute, but you can mount this to a fan so you can use a fan as an actual mounting spot. Something else worth mentioning here is it does have brackets for Intel and AMD. This is literally the first time I'm looking inside this guy. All right, so when you open it up, this is the first thing you find on top here. This is the uh, Ecolint EK Coolant Evo Clear. It is a concentrate, so you're gonna mix this with distilled water or deionized water, whichever you have available. Um, it is a clear though, so there's no color pigment to this. You can add dye to it if you want though. Here are our fittings right here. These are compression fittings. We'll look at those up close more in a minute. Here is our tubing. We've got what appears to be a 3 8 inch inner diameter. I'm not sure what the outer diameter is, but it's a little bit thinner wall. Um, some of these do come with really thick wall. The nice thing about this being a slightly thinner wall is you can get some pretty good bends in there. We have got PWM fan splitter right here. This is gonna be important for having both fans controlled by PWM temperature CPU control. So you don't have to worry about having multiple headers on your motherboard available. As long as you've got one PWM header available, you can split that off to your fans. We've got a jumper here, which is what we use to start and bleed the system. So that's important. You plug this into the 24 pin on your power supply, and then you can use the switch on the back of your power supply to turn it on and bleed your system without having to turn on the motherboard, which you don't wanna do until it's completely bled. Here's the bracket that I mentioned right here. We'll look at that closer in a second. You've got some LEDs right here, which you can put inside the Supremacy water block if you want it to light up. And we've got some small mounting screws right here. I'm not sure what these are for. I, they're probably gonna be for mounting the pump and the bracket. And then in here is, is all the goodies, like the really good stuff. Here's our pump combo. So this is a reservoir and a pump in one, which is kind of neat because one, it limits the amount of fittings that you need when you do it this way because the pump and the reservoir are one unit. And two, it means you're always going to be priming the system properly because the reservoir is on top of the pump. It's directly feeding the pump. So you don't even have to worry about putting it in the right order. This is the most important part of bleeding a system and they have already done it for you. Here's our anti-vortex foam piece that you put inside the reservoir. And then here is the rest of the unit itself right there. The cables here are not sleeved. I would have really liked to have seen them go the extra mile and sleeve this because this is gonna probably be visible in your system where you're, wherever you're routing it to. So here is the anti-vibration ring. You can see they've got one already mounted right here on the pump, which mounts to the reservoir right here. That's actually a pretty nice unit, I like that. In and out on the reservoir are clearly marked so there's no guesswork on which is inlet and outlet. So that's already done for you, good to see. What else we got in here? Oh, okay, so here is our EK Supremacy Evo block. This is literally exactly as it would come off the shelf if you've ordered it separately. I've got several of these. I've got one in Skunk Works. One of these is going in Terry Cruz's build. Uh, I've got one on the test bench right here. I love the EK Supremacy block. Yeah, so anyway, it comes pre-installed with the Intel bracket. Here's the AMD one, which you can switch if you need to. Here's all your hold down hardware. Of course, a manual on how to install it. And then here is the block right here. Of course, it comes with thermal paste, which you need. You need thermal paste. And then it's got the different jetting in here, depending on the CPU that you're installing. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you check the manual 
and install the right jet. 2011-3 uses a different jetting than 1151, 1150, etc. So make sure you check the manual. It'll show you how to install this. In fact, you guys have seen me do this on some of the builds where you see me change out the jetting. That's why I'm doing it. All right, so these are the Vardar fans. I've actually got, I love the Vardar fan. They include the 1850 RPM fan. These are PWM controlled, which I already showed you the splitter for. And that's neat because as your system's load increases, so will the fan speed. So you don't have to worry about setting any of that up in any sort of fan tuning software. But if your motherboard and such does include fan tuning software, then you can control these as well, as long as they are hooked up to a PWM circuit on your motherboard. But you can see they've got pretty static optimized blade design on here. Uh, I love everything about these fans. The way they're swooped on the ends so air can't trap or get lost between the blade and the shroud. I absolutely love these fans. In fact, I've got I've got three of them running right there. There's a, there's a white one right there. You can probably see it. Got three of those here on the test bench. So yeah, see the Vardar fans included is a nice little, it's a bone. These are, these are great fans. I can't say enough about them. And then hardware wise, last but not least, we have our Coolstream PE radiator. I have actually got, these are the same rads I put in Skunk Works. You guys have already seen these get installed. They're pretty clean too. So you can have some pretty good faith in the radiator cleanliness when you go to install it. You should still flush it just for good measure. And then this one, because it's the PE is a little bit thicker. So you want to make sure when you're installing this in your system or you're choosing your case, or you're buying this system for a case you already own, make sure that you're accounting for the thickness of the radiator as well as the 25 millimeter thickness of the fan on top of that. So it's a, it's a pretty beefy design. So you're gonna get some pretty good cooling out of this 240. Now, of course, we have our installation manual here, which is good because it guides you through installation for first time builders. Now, of course, it's available in a 240, a 280, and a 360. This is actually a pretty good manual. Everything's fully illustrated. It's not cheaply made. They've, they've put a lot of effort into how this manual looks. Here's the, the jet installation right there I was telling you about. So it shows you how to do it, the proper order the pieces go in. There's no guesswork here. Sometimes you guys know the manuals on some things just suck really badly, but not this one here. It's actually color illustrated. Well, at least they put, they make it orange, the part they're referring to. So you're not guessing if it's all black and white, you're just guessing like, which part are they talking about? Nope, it's actually colored and pointed out. Yeah, I'm impressed. This is a really good manual. Now I mentioned earlier that it's got mounting options included for the pump. And there's two different ways you can mount this. You could drill holes and mount this to the back wall of your case. If you've got a case with a big enough opening like an SMA8 or something huge, and then just mount the pump to that and off you go. The holes are already pre-drilled. Here's the four holes that mount with the pump. It is a shock mount on there. So there's a little bit of play, but at the same time, that's going to give you a lot of vibration control so the pump isn't gonna be vibrating into your case. Make sure you put these two screws in right here on the side though. Right now it's kind of left open so that you can take this off and change the mount type if you need to. Um, and also so that you can rotate the entire pump assembly in there if you need to. So you can rotate this whole assembly that way the reservoir is pointing the way you need them to go. Now here's the bracket I showed you momentarily ago. This is actually spaced out in 120 millimeters so that you can mount them to a fan, you can mount them to the radiator itself, and the radiator then turns into a mounting bracket. Now let's say you have this radiator mounted on the front of a case, like a Define S or something like that. You can then mount the pump to the back wall of this mount just like such, and actually you have this opening here in the bottom of the bracket so that you can run the wires through. Again, this is why I kind of wish that they were sleeved wires. I think you can see. That's really the only improvement I can think of so far to this kit is sleeve the wires. So anyway, this mounts on here just like that. You can see that the holes do indeed line up. And then you can mount this to the bottom of the radiator. And there it is right there. It turns the radiator, the water pump, and the reservoir kind of into a combo all on its own. And then you still have enough clearance on the top there, as you can see, so that your fittings are not being interfered by the reservoir. And last of all, we have our compression fittings here. These are true compression fittings with lockdown collars so that you're not going to be dealing with leaks and such in your soft tubing. There you go, these are very nice looking. They're all nickel plated. So these go into your components and then you just lock this down on the collar, on the tubing as tight as it'll go and then you're pr pretty much leak free. So there you go, guys. That was my first look here at EK's Performance 240. Uh, they call it a starter liquid cooling kit, but there's literally nothing starter about this. I mean, it's got top shelf parts 
put into a box. That's literally what it is. They take all the guesswork out of it for you. If you bought the Evo by itself, this is exactly the package you would get. If you bought the D5 pump res combo, this is exactly the box that you would get. It's not like it's something special put into this box. They've literally taken all the guesswork out of it for you and simplified it. That way you can spend less time trying to figure out what parts you need and more time putting it together and enjoying your system. So now you guys tell me what you think about these custom kits in a box. I, I think as an experienced water cooler has been doing this for well over a decade, I think this is exactly what the community needs. Confusion is never a good thing. So why be confused? Take a look at kits like this. And the fact that it comes in multiple sizes, a 240, a 280, and a 360, means it's got you covered when it comes to expandability. And of course, if those radiator sizes aren't enough, you need more, just add another radiator to it, add a little bit more tubing and get the same size fittings, you're up and running. It's very, very simple. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video here. I will find a situation to put this system in. I think I've got one. I've got a system I'm working on here soon that uh, I think that this will be a nice addition to. Anyway, time to go. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I will see you in my next video.